Minas, the question of whether quantum physics impacts consciousness, I look at it in two parts. First of all, quantum physics affects everything, so fine. But is there something special where the, the principles of quantum physics are critical to understand what we mean by consciousness? Consciousness is very relevant to quantum physics and vice versa. As we, as Bob Nadeau and I said in the Conscious Universe, our book, uh, quantum theory opened the door to the question of consciousness. Opened the door. It didn't ignore it as classical physics was doing up to that point. It opened the door. This is a call, so-called problem of observation or the measurement problem, as they say in quantum theory. It opened the door and made it relevant, but it has not answered what consciousness is. Well, so, so now you're saying that in quantum physics, the observer affects the system and how it's... So that, that's how consciousness affects quantum physics. And that's very different than quantum physics affecting consciousness. What in fact happens is because of the choice, again, of observation. You have certain observational outcomes that you prepare and you choose according to probability theory given by the wave function. Look, I can appreciate that you do need consciousness to interpret quantum physics, but it's a fallacy to assume that because of that, you need quantum physics to explain consciousness. Just because something goes in one direction, it doesn't yeah, mean it right, goes, right, right, right. the relationship goes the right, other direction. Right. You're right. So the question is, is really quantum physics relevant to consciousness? That's the question. That's the question. And if quantum physics is the most relevant physics theory, and if consciousness is in the universe, then it may go the other way too. Well, this bench is in the universe, and this bench is the way it looks because of quantum physics. What's the difference? Correct. Why would you say physics or quantum physics has anything to do about consciousness? But if you don't, I mean, quantum physics has to do with everything. Yes. But where is the cause of consciousness? Quantum physics doesn't cause consciousness more than it causes this bench. It, it, you need it to put it together. But there's nothing special about this bench. There is something special about consciousness. And 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 the the claim that quantum physics can explain it has no substance to it. In fact, I would not go as far as saying that quantum physics can explain everything about consciousness. What I would say is that quantum physics is relevant to consciousness. Okay. More than it's relevant to this bench? It's relevant to everything. Right. So if consciousness is the underlying reality in the universe, this stuff deep down, then what quantum theory says is relevant to consciousness. Okay, I would agree with that, but now you're introducing some wild new speculation that consciousness, as opposed to being some phenomenon that exists here on Earth because of some evolutionary uh, accidents, uh, is, is somehow fundamental. Then, then I would agree. Then, if it's fundamental, if it's fundamental, if it's fundamental, if it's fundamental then fundamental. quantum physics is, is fundamental, must have a relationship. But that's a big if. Before we go to the big if, let's say let's explore a little bit more what I mean by quantum theory is relevant. Okay. Good. For example, the quantum theory is based on certain principles, yep. such as the wave particle duality. If that principle complementarity. complementarity, if that of those principles are fundamental, then they would apply to consciousness. Then perhaps learning from quantum theory, we can say some things about consciousness. The question is, can we say more things about consciousness to explain it than we can say about this bench that I keep talking about? We can use quantum physics to explain this bench, and we can use quantum physics to explain the brain, the physical world, but to use it to explain this incredible thing called consciousness, is there a step to be made, an extra step? The extra step is to step back and say, what really do we know? about this bench that you say. What do we know about particles? They are all mediated by certain acts of observation, certain experiences. In fact, at the end of the day, there's nothing else than experience. Quantum theory, 
open the door of that experience, the conscious experience. And if that is the case, then consciousness, of course, is very fundamental. And look, I didn't choose it to be that way. It is the, <laughs> seems to be the only thing that in the end of the day makes any sense. Neuroscientists would say that uh, brain circuits are involved between the front of the brain and the back of the brain or rhythmic uh, cycles in the brain that organize different parts of it. This is the, the biological basis of consciousness. The fact that it's quantum theory is at such low levels, uh, uh, huge numbers of orders of magnitude at lower levels is irrelevant to brain circuits or brain uh, um, cycles. What do you say to that? Well, I would turn the question around and say, uh, you see a building, you see a large building. Let's say you see this beautiful building around us. Can you say that what happens at the stone level, at the sandstone or whatever the material is made, the wall is made of, is irrelevant to the structure of this building? I would say no. Well, it's not irrelevant. It's, it's very relevant. But it is not directly causative. It is the right across it. Without, without the structure of the, yeah, but of, it's, it, of it, the it, stones, but, the wall wouldn't exist. Okay, but, it, but in, in terms of this, those stones can make all different kinds of buildings. Of course, and you have different buildings. Uh, right, but, but here you're saying that quantum physics actually has a, a direct relationship to, what, to this unique thing of consciousness, which nobody can really explain. I mean, I know that. I, I, I accept that. Right. So there needs to be some other kind of explanation that exists, and, and I would love, I'd love to find it, and people tell me it's quantum physics, I just don't see that. Well, it's quantum physics up to a point. The f fundamentals of the universe is consciousness, and quantum physics is an aspect of it. All I'm saying is that, look, by studying quantum physics, we may learn something about consciousness that may surprise us. It doesn't mean that quantum physics causes consciousness. It just says that it's part of the whole thing. And by studying quantum physics, for example, complementarity, maybe that is a foundational principle of consciousness at every level, give including me, biology. Give me an example of how I would be surprised. You tell me something in studying quantum physics about consciousness, surprise me. Well, for example, today we know I realize that the predominant viewpoint of neuroscience is that everything happens in the brain, but we know that actually the mind, so-called mind, is not localized in the brain. That there are, in fact, other organs, such as the heart, that they seem to have neurons. Not the same neurons as in the brain, but they have neurons. They have their own automated system to make the heart, in fact, beat even if the brain is not sending signals to it. So this idea of the mind just being in the brain or in the skull is falling a little bit apart. There is some sort of a non-locality of the mind in the human body. If that is the case, that smacks or smells <laughs> like quantum theory in a way. But it doesn't mean that consciousness is derived from quantum theory. It just says that quantum theory is following principles which also operate at the consciousness level, universal, such as non-locality.